Well, everybody, it is finally time. I have been so excited to swatch these out. Uh, you may have seen, geez, a few months ago now, I received these in the mail. Um, I bought some paints. They had a buy one, get one sort of sale. And I bought myself some paints from this handmade Canadian company, which I'm going to tell you more about in just a minute. And they have been sitting here taunting me four months because I wanted to pull these out and really paint with them and swatch them out and show them to you guys and myself. And I just had so many other things going on I couldn't get to it. So today is the day that we get to it. I'm so excited. And sort of to honor the fact that these are Canadian and handmade, I've decided the paper I'm going to swatch these on today is also going to be Canadian and handmade. And this is the texture. I wonder if I'm going to be able to show this. The texture with a nice deckled edge. And this paper here is from, see now I looked this up online and it's hard to tell if they're actually still in Quebec or if they're in Ontario, but this uh, Saint Armand paper is 100% reclaimed cotton fibers like they they collect cutoffs from the fashion industry and use the cotton cutoffs the fibers to make this paper and so I thought you know that would be good you know two Canadian made two handmade you know so yeah while I get set up let me just tell you a little bit more about these amazing paints so I first heard about Beam Paints from a podcast I listened to and she had interviewed them and the company looked very interesting when I went to go check them out but I couldn't afford to get any paints at the time so when they had the buy one get one um, sale I just couldn't resist and had to get some paints obviously but they are a pretty awesome company for many reasons. Um, one, it's Canadian, it's indigenous owned, it's woman owned, and the paints are handmade. They shape the paint into what they call paint stones. It's their version of a half pan. And then they wrap them in beeswax canvas, or as we'll see in paper, they do that as a part of their goal to be 100% plastic free, which is another reason that they're super cool. I'm gonna leave a link in the description, go check them out. There's some pretty awesome stuff there. I'm also gonna leave a link to uh, a page where there's an interview with the owner uh, talking about the family history of the company um, and how she got into it and all that sort of stuff. And they've also given me a, a discount code here for 10% off your order. And this is another word I can't pronounce, so I'm gonna stick it up on screen. <laughs> and use this code for 10% off your next order. I am in no way affiliated with them. I am not sponsored by them. I just totally thought they were a cool company and had to check out these paints. So I hope you enjoy the swatching of these paints. Okay, on with the swatching. So as you've seen, these paints came in this lovely reusable um, cotton pouch, which is nice. And then they also come in a waxed, it's a beeswaxed cotton wrapper. Uh, which has been hand printed with their logo. And here they are. So their paints, they call them paint stones. They used to be like this one here. It's in a like a little folded up piece of waxed cotton. Um, but it seems that they've moved on now to little folded up pieces of cotton paper. So it'll be interesting to see how these hold up when you get, continually get them wet and uh, work on getting the paint out there and how much paint, you know, kind of gets absorbed into the paper. I don't know. We'll find out, won't we? But the, yeah, because they're striving to be 100% plastic free, everything is, is very, um, you know, natural. So I didn't pick like any specific normal colors. Like I didn't pick like a palette. I just kind of went through their list and picked out ones that kind of looked interesting or in some cases had a really interesting name. And um, 
you know, I just grabbed those ones just out of curiosity, basically. I have a ton of other watercolors for my like basic painting palettes. I don't need another one. These are just sort of like, you know, for fun. And I also wanted to note that I have never actually tried handmade paints before. So um, I have read that they can have a different texture than your uh, manufactured paints, but like I said, I've never tried them before, so it'll be interesting to see all kinds of things that are going on here. So I'm going to do something with my swatching a little different this time. If any of you watch Natasha Newton, you may recognize <laughs> what I'm trying to do here. I am going to um, try to swatch out pebbles. Um, Natasha Newton swatches her colors out in pebbles and I really like the look of it and I just thought it would be a really good way to really play with these colors and see what they can do. So I have gotten my sheet prepared here and put down the names and um, yeah, let's get going. Let's start with the first one here, uh, Milkweed. Uh, and it is a pigment white six. Pigment blue 15, 1, and pigment yellow 74. And I just want to see how quickly it just uh, reactivates. Oh, pretty quickly. It's creamy probably because of that, uh, whoops, because of the white in it. Pretty pale. I think it's coming out way more yellow on camera than what it is in person. It's a very, like it's pastel, it's like a pastel lime green in person. But it feels um, relatively sort of thick and creamy. Thinned out area in here. Some extra water. It makes me think of like if you were to paint a nursery green or a yellowy green. This is the color that you would pick because it's so soft and pastel-y and pretty. I'm starting to see some a uh, little bit more as it soaks into the paper. There's some uh, separation between blue and yellow a little bit, but it's very faint. It's not like it's very um, granular or anything like that. We'll get a closer look at these two once I get them all done. Okay, next is, we're going to take a look at Spring Green, which is actually the same pigments as in the Milkweed minus the white. So it's got pigment yellow 74 and pigment blue 15 1. Interesting. I didn't notice that when I was ordering them. I feel like I have to hold the paint stones in place so I don't knock it over. Oh, did you see that? I put that water in there and it soaked right down inside the paint like almost instantly. Thirsty paints. But it's reactivating pretty quickly. It has soaked up the water and doesn't seem to be um, as thirsty now. So yeah. Same pigments and it's very similar, although this one is coming out more yellow, so there must be more of that uh, yellow pigment in it than in the other one. And of course it doesn't have the white, so it doesn't have that creamy pastel look. It's very pretty, like a, almost like a chartreuse. Noticing this paper uh, absorbs pretty quickly. I've never actually, <laughs> never actually used this paper before, so maybe I should have tested it out before deciding to swatch all these on here. But so far, so good, I think.
Okay, moving along to a pumpkin. So this has pigment yellow 74 again and pigment red 101. Pigment red 101. I feel like that's like transparent red oxide or something along that lines or transparent oxide. Could be wrong. Anyways, I'll try to get all that green out of my brush from the last one. Not as thirsty as the last one. The water's just sitting on the top there. This one, I think, is going to need just a couple more seconds to really reactivate. I can see that it's starting, but I don't remember if I mentioned, but you don't have to get the paint. Uh, keep the paint in these wrappers. You can get their palettes to put them in. That they made from um, birch cutoffs. Ooh, that's a super bright orange. Super pretty. I don't have a lot of orange paints. I usually will mix an orange if I need it, but it is nice to have a couple sort of convenience ones around. And this one is definitely a good choice. I think it's very nice, very bright, very what you would expect out of an orange. Very pumpkin-y. I feel like Natasha's pebbles are nicer than mine. <laughs> Shouldn't be so hard on myself. It's my first try. Lovely. I like it. Okay, moving on to the next one. Now, this is one of the ones I picked up because I liked the name. <laughs> it's Turtle Belly. Uh, I should mention, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the uh, First Nations actual, the words here. It means turtle belly. I know I just would totally butcher this. <laughs> so I'll show it to you. And if you can say it, then hurrah. Anyways, it's made out of pigment red 122 and pigment yellow 74. Oh, that one re-wets like very, very quickly. Looks like this is also going to be very orange. On screen when I ordered it, it looked like it was much more red, which I guess as it's re-wetting here, it, it is starting to look a little bit more red. It's very opaque compared to the other one. Yeah, it's still very orangey, but it's definitely a red. Very, very warm. You could call it a dark orange or a very warm red.
Very nice color though. You can get really nice uh, a dark, a deep saturation with it. Okay, moving on to the next one here. It is called Slate. And I could not find any pigment information on it. It's not written on the package, uh, the little label here, and I couldn't find the color listed on their site today when I went to go look. So yeah, we're just gonna swatch it out and <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> oh, it's another one of those thirsty colors. You see that silk right down in there. Okay, it sucked, it sucked up what it needed. I think it's gonna be, it's gonna need a minute here to um, reactivate. I think I'm gonna just put some water on here like this and set it aside and we'll move over to the next one and come back to this once it's sort of soaked up some water. Okay, moving on to the next one while we wait for that one to soak up a little bit. This is another one that I got because of the name. <laughs> Wet Grizzly. It was kind of too funny for me. Uh, and this one's pigment yellow 164 and some mica so I could tell when it's dry it's got just a little bit of a shimmer so this one's going to be cool I think to see it swatch out okay let's see it's almost like a aged gold or a bronze color I don't know if at all this is showing up on camera the way it is in person. I mean, you can see it's, you can see the gold sort of mica color just sort of floating around on top of this very browny yellow. I really hope that shows up on camera. It's quite fun. I don't use a lot of sparkly, shimmery, metallic paints in my work, but they are fun to play with every now and then. It's looking much more gold, like a dark, dirty gold when it's right there. Just gonna scatter that pigment all over the place. That one lifts quite easily. Okay, let's see how our sleek gray is doing here. Better. I still think it, it, it would benefit from soaking longer, but I don't want to wait anymore. So it feels, um, how do I describe this? Sort of sticky? <laughs> Tasty? but it feels smooth once you're painting it, but it definitely has that, um, you know, some watercolor paints have a bit of a, um, I don't know, they just have like a goopier feeling than others. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. This is one of those. Very, very pale, soft gray. Not too dissimilar from my clouds outside today, actually. <laughs> actually, the clouds that just flutter by, there it's on and off. It's supposed to rain, but it hasn't yet. Trying to get more pigment. Give me more pigment. It's very soft. Very soft, gentle gray. Again, 
no idea what the pigments are. I'm assuming there's a white in it, but that's all I can guess at this moment. Ooh, okay. I don't know if this is gonna show up. Can you see the sparkle in the, the the mica in here? The sparkle on it? See if I can get a really good look at it here when, when it's it's super sparkly now that it's dry. Okay, next. The next one's here. I've got some blues. Okay, so the first one down here on this row. Is another one that I bought because of the color. Uh, Timber Wolf Gray. Now it says here that this is their Payne's Gray, but if you look on their website now, they have Timber Wolf listed as um, Pigment Blue 29 and Pigment Yellow 43. Um, and then they have a separate listing for one called Payne's Gray that's got three colors in it. So I'm not sure what one I have. <laughs> um, but let's just swatch it out anyways and let's see what happens. I think it's re-wetting okay. I'm really trying to work it and get as much pigment out of there as I can. I like to work with really sort of creamy milky mixtures of watercolor and then you know, thin it out more from there if I need it. You know, it's a really pretty, uh, muted, moody blue color. I love it. I really like this. I gave myself more room than I needed for these <laughs> stone swatches. I can see a little bit of color separation in there. I can see some spots that just look a little bit more blue than the other. Another thing I've noticed is all my pebbles are pretty much exactly the same shape. Natasha is definitely better at this than me. <laughs> Oops. So pretty. Yeah, you really can see the ultramarine blue there, that the pigment blue um, 29 that I mentioned earlier. When you thin it, you can really see it. Cool. Yeah, there's some definite like brown flecks and blue flecks. I love it. Love it, love it. So this next one is called Lake Huron Teal and it's pigment green 17, which I believe is it pigment green 17. I thought their website said pigment green seven, but it says 17 here. Who knows? <laughs> Let us swatch it. And I've like totally taken over uh, where I was gonna swatch it here. I totally wasn't paying attention. So I'm just gonna make a long, funny looking stone up and like this. This one almost seal, it seems like it's a, uh, oh, there we go. That first it seemed a little water resistant, but now we're getting somewhere. The paint has a, 
like when I'm rubbing my brush on it, I can almost feel like a slight, a slight grittiness to it. Which I think that's because it's a handmade paint. Ooh, that's super bright. That is super bright, but very pretty. It's like, it almost looks like it's got two pigments in it, actually. It almost looks like it's got a greener one and a bluer one, but it says it's only got one color. It's very transparent. What a weird shaped pebble. If I can get a thicker wash of color here. This is pretty. I bet you this would be very nice mixing color. Highlight up here this time. Oh, it lifts very easily, so it's not very staining. Nice. Okay. So on to the next one here, and this one is called Sky Color, or Sky Blue, as I also saw. And it's Pigment White 6 and Pigment Blue 15 1. So this is like a phthalo blue and a white. And I was kind of looking for sort of a convenience, um, a convenience sky color when I picked this one out, actually. Oop, soaked right in there, too. <laughs> Just soaking the water right up. There we go. Slowing down a bit. Okay. And we wet lighter. But so did some of the other ones. It's relatively opaque because of the white. It's very bright and pretty. And smooth, I'm not seeing much in the lines of um, granulation or anything like that. It's drying pretty quickly. It doesn't look like it's going to lift at all. I'm trying to re-wet it here for a highlight. Let's see what happens. Like <laughs> it's almost like painting with acrylic like it's like it's just there it's in there and oh it's probably because of the phthalo color they're very staining the pp15 but yeah it's solid in there i 
guess I'm getting a little bit. What if I use paper towel? Eh, maybe a little bit. Yeah, it looks just a little, but really, really not very much. Okay, last one. And it's another one with an awesome name. Uh, Wintery Night. And it's pigment blue 15, pigment yellow 164, and mica. So this should be a shimmery one. Although I don't see as much shimmer on it as I did the, the grizzly, the wet grizzly. But let's see what happens here. Trying to figure out where to put my hand here that's not like on here. Let's just turn this. I've got lights set up in certain areas, plus I've got wet paint on my <laughs> paper. I'm trying not to stick my hand right in it. There, okay, let's do this. Oh, I can see some of the shimmer going in there now, rolling around in there now. Ooh. Ooh. I like it. It's a very dark blue aqua color, which is funny because when it's dried in the, the the little paint stone here, I almost said in the pan, <laughs> um, it looks greeny, which I guess technically it's sort of, you know, it's got a little bit of a greeniness. It is a, like a turquoisey aqua. I love these kinds of colors. Ooh, I like it. Be interesting to see if it has that um, very strong, distinct shimmer like the White Grizzly did. Lifts okay. Well, I like it. I like it. I like it. And one little bonus that they threw in was this little um, sample, and it's Mars Violet. So I'm just gonna give it a little, a little pebble up here beside the wet grizzly. Mars Violet. Very red. That's a that is a good healthy sample size for paint. I wish all manufacturers would give you that size because you can really get a good feel for the color and the way the paint behaves when you've got enough paint to work with and play with. But man, this is so pretty. Like these two colors together, mm, loving. I guess it is sort of violet-y. It's a very burgundy, maroon. I still don't know the difference. I, I, every time I think of the words burgundy and maroon, I know there's a difference. One is more red and one is more brown. And I look it up and I'm like, okay, must remember that. And I never freaking remember it. But anyways, wine, let's go with wine. It's the color of a nice deep red wine. And camera died. Sorry about that. <laughs> but you didn't really miss much. I was just watching that last little sample. But um, I am zoomed in here. Everything is dry. So we'll get a closer look here. Let me get a little closer. There's the milkweed, the spring green. So overall, I really enjoyed working with these paints. I had a lot of fun. I think they're great quality. There's 
the grizzly, see if I can get some of that sparkle in there. The Mars Violet did dry much more purpley and violety. And make sure you check out the links in the description below if you are at all interested. This is one of my favorite. This uh, Timberwolf reminds me of like maybe a Daniel Smith color or something where it's got those couple of pigments that granulate and separate. I really like it. And the sky blue was the sort of um, thickest, the most opaque, most highly staining of them all. When I tried to lift out a highlight, it <laughs> wasn't really very successful like it was on the other ones. And then here again, the winter night, another favorite of mine. So it's got that dark turquoisey blue and little bits of that gold glimmer in there. So yeah, great paints, would highly recommend. I had a lot of fun with these. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you um, the slate gray. I was having a, a little bit of a time re-wetting it. Well, it finally did soften up and it turns out there was a big arrow pull in there. <laughs> it's not super deep. It's not like the whole thing was hollow or anything, but there's an air bubble in there. Anyways, there they are. I hope you enjoyed this and found it interesting. Uh, let me know below um, if you have favorite handmade watercolors um, that you've tried or have you tried these? What do you think of them? Um, but yeah, anyways, I hope you have a great day and until the next video. Bye!